remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Travis Cook back with you once again, and the immigration debate, the topic of immigration has reared its ugly head in American politics yet again. Barack Obama has uh, gone down the road of immigration now, that's become his priority of the week, I suppose, and he's demanding that Congress come up with some kind of legislation, so now you hear back and forth all this stuff between the Democrats and the Republicans about what kind of things can we do, what kind of things shouldn't we do, etc., and Obama is clearly trying to use this as a wedge issue among the right because he believes that talk of amnesty will be something that could wedge us apart. And there is, I suppose, some degree of potential for that. Uh, there are, through the week, uh, different calls for different kinds of amnesty plans. A lot of them aren't called that, but you're hearing some people on the right, some people, in the, well, I shouldn't say on the right, but in the Republican Party, maybe they're not conservatives, but some people in the Republican Party are calling for what they might call a path to citizenship which is a really fancy and non-threatening way of saying amnesty. Now, let me be clear. As far as I'm concerned, the thought of amnesty turns my stomach. These are people that broke our laws, that have stolen from us, that came in here into the dead of night and have put us all at risk. So regardless of what party talks about amnesty, whether it's the Democrats or the Republicans under a nice fluffy name, the idea turns my stomach. I'm against amnesty. I, I hate the idea. It's not a Democrat or Republican thing. It's a right or wrong thing. And amnesty is wrong, period. However, I am as bad as I hate to do it. I am ready to admit that from a logistic standpoint, I understand the difficulty, perhaps even impossibility, and the cost associated with rounding up all of these illegals and booting their asses out of the country. In a perfect world, that's exactly what would happen. That's what they deserve. But I understand that's going to be pretty unlikely in the short term. So I started thinking about this. I started wondering, hey, is there, dare I say it, is there an amnesty plan I could get behind? Well, currently I don't see one. But I did come up with an idea of a type of amnesty plan that I, I wouldn't say I could get behind it, but I could at least tolerate it. And it's amnesty with with one caveat that I think makes a lot of sense. So I want you to hear me out. I don't think anybody has, has proposed this idea so far that I've heard, either uh, politician-wise or, or in terms of commentators. Or so I want to see what you guys think of this. Most of the ideas out there right now are, okay, a path to citizenship. You put these illegals at the back of the line, and they got to work through it. Okay, I'm good with that, but there needs to be one more thing. If we are going to give full citizenship to these illegal aliens, these people who have already proven that they will break our laws, that have already violated our trust, if we're going to give them full citizenship, I think we need to do it with this caveat. The caveat that they will not be allowed to vote permanently. They will never be allowed to vote during their time as a citizen of the United States. Now, I know when I say that, half of you listening to me are saying, that makes a lot of sense. That's a good idea. And the other half of you, your jaw is on the floor. You can't believe it. You can't believe someone says, hey, these American citizens should not be allowed to vote. That's exactly what I'm saying. Well, they're not American citizens yet, but assuming they become American citizens, I'm saying they should not be allowed to vote. Now, why am I saying this? What, what, what's the motivation behind this? Well, let me be clear about one particular thing. I think whatever we do on this issue, whatever road we take, the central theme, the central idea, the central, the central fact that we have to keep in front of our eyes at all times is this, that these illegal aliens broke our laws, period, end of story. So they're starting off from that perspective. These are people who are lawbreakers. They are proven lawbreakers. They have broken our law every day they have woken up on this side of the border. Now, I'm not saying some of them aren't good people or can't be contributors to society or whatever. Potentially that can happen. But they have proven that we cannot fully trust them from day one. We understand that. So anything we do in this regard has to be centered around that idea that there's a degree of trust that has been broken that can never be achieved again. And so I think, what, what's, what's the, what, what are there in American society, what c American citizens are there that are probably the best or, or closest comparison to that? And I think of convicted felons, because when you think about it, we don't, we don't allow convicted felons to vote either, do we? And that's a pretty reasonable thing. These are people who have violated trust with, with society, not by a speeding ticket, by, but by an egregious breaking of the law, of a major law. 
And so even though we allow them to pay their debt to society and we allow them then to get out of prison, sometimes without serving their full time, but we do allow them out of prison and we allow them to build a life for themselves and work and, and have success and everything else, as we should. But we never allow them to vote because there's always a certain degree of trust that they'll never get back with us. And I think illegal aliens, or criminal aliens as I like to call them, are in a very similar boat. Now, some of you are saying, that's discrimination! You don't want illegal aliens to vote! That's discrimination! You're a racist! You're a racist! You're a racist! I can hear you now. I'm going to explain to you why that's not the case. I know that the media, sometimes people who are lazy, will think of illegal aliens merely as Hispanics. But that's not the case. There's a lot of nationalities that make up illegal immigrants. You can go to any city in America and find illegal immigrants of virtually every ethnicity and nationality. Sure, there's, there's Hispanics out there that are illegal immigrants. There's also folks from Europe and folks from the Middle East and folks from Canada and folks from South America. And guess what? I want this law applied the same way to every damn one of them. So it's not discrimination at all. I think a Canadian illegal immigrant should be treated the exact same way as a Mexican illegal immigrant. Neither one of them should be allowed to vote. And if you're going to do amnesty, that needs to be part of it. So it's not discrimination at all. The only people we are discriminating against, if you're hell-bent on using that word, are people who have broke the freaking law to begin with. Gee, I think that's a degree of discrimination that we all ought to be in favor of. And don't get me wrong. Children of illegal aliens and, and people who are born here and so forth, I'm for full rights for them, including voting. Those kids, they didn't break the law. It's their parents that broke the law. I don't expect those kids to, to pay for the transgressions of their parents. I wouldn't expect anybody's kids to do that. So they get the full rights. I'm totally good with that. But I'm talking specifically about the illegals who came over here. They should be denied the right to vote. Remember this much. These illegal aliens have not earned citizenship in America. They have not earned the right to be Americans. And I know this is going to make some of you very uncomfortable here, but let's face it. They are being, I don't want to say given citizenship, we're just considering it now, but we are considering allowing them to be citizens, not because of anything they've earned, not because of anything they've done, not because of them repairing that bridge of trust that can never be repaired, but we're frankly considering giving them citizenship because it would just be too damn hard to do the right thing and deport them all. It would be logistically nearly impossible. In other words, what I'm telling you is that illegal aliens are getting their lucky day. They're catching a break. They're getting the opportunity that they have not earned to join the most exclusive and greatest club in the world, the Americans. They have a chance to become one of us. We're giving them that opportunity that they have not earned. And I think as such, since we, the American citizens, are the ones who have been transgressed upon by these lawbreakers, we're the ones who have been victimized by these lawbreakers, we're the ones who have been put at risk and put at danger by these lawbreakers, that if we are still benevolently considering allowing them to become citizens in spite of all that, that it's not unreasonable for us to place a couple of demands on it, merely that they not be allowed to vote. I think that's more than reasonable. I think it's hella nice on our part. I can't believe I'm even suggesting it. Part of me wants to retch right now at the thought of it. But it's your lucky day, illegal aliens. We're giving you the chance to be one of us. And yeah, we got a couple of demands. You can't vote. But other than that, you can be an American. You can take advantage of everything that this country has to offer. And you know what? I hope, in spite of what you've done to me and the rest of us, I hope, once you attain citizenship, that you have a magnificent life beyond the bounds of anything you ever dreamed of. Because that can happen in America. That's why you came here, wasn't it? You could have came here a better way. You could have came here the right way. But nevertheless, you're going to have that opportunity. But we can never fully trust you. And I think deep down you can understand why. But I'm not going to stand in your way of having this opportunity. As long as there's an amnesty plan that denies illegal aliens the right to vote, and as long as any sort of amnesty, amnesty plan comes with uh, tightened board security once and for all. Remember, we, we were told we were going to get that back in 1986, and we didn't. We got to have it this time. You put those two factors in there, I'm going to be all for it. I'm willing, I'm willing to make that compromise. See, we conservatives can compromise. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius, Travis Cook. We've got a couple of big things coming up for you. Pay attention if you, if you don't mind. We have a second show coming up called Hashtag of the Week that we're going to start this weekend where we go on a Twitter and find the funniest hashtag and we highlight some of the best tweets of the week. It's a way to have a little bit of fun with the political process and do a little bit more humor than we do here. Also, I recently wrote a blog piece on the positive uh, influence of Rush Limbaugh on American politics over the last 20 years. You know, Ed Schultz on MSNBC 
uh, after the inauguration, he threw the way things ought to be Limbaugh's book into the trash can. I respond to that in the written piece, and that's on my blog page. You'll see that at the bottom of your screen there. Take the time to check, check that out and give that a read if you don't mind. That's it for this week. This is America's evil genius, Travis Cook. We will see you next time.